Getting that paper, you know. Apparently, they got a catalog out now that shows all the different bribe packages that they offer. You know, they now cater for both contract and prepaid. You know, you know a lot of people don't know these things. People don't know these things. You know, and um, the option that really caught my eye was the uh, the pay as you bribe option that I think a lot of motorists are currently on. You know, it's quite convenient. It's quite convenient because I mean. A lot of people don't know how much money to keep with them out there these days when they're driving besides petrol, you know? You don't know what roads you're going to be driving, what tariffs are on those roads. So you need to know these things, you know? But um, one thing about me though, I'm a bona fide petrol head. I love cars. I love everything about cars. I love driving, modifying. You know, I love cars so much, my blood type is unleaded. <laughs> that's, the, that's how much I love cars. You know, I love cars so much, I almost asked one out the other day. You know, I was coming up to this charcoal 2011 Subaru Impreza WRX SCI, you know? The one with the sunroof and the sports exhaust pack. The car was so hot, I stopped and fixed my hair. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I started walking up to it, got my swagger on, you know, flashing my petrol card, saying, anywhere you want to go, baby. <laughs> Yeah man, I love cars, I love cars, you know? I love cars so much, I wanted to get a job at this place called Goodfellas. I don't know if anyone you know that company, Goodfellas. I know a lot of y'all do, I see a lot of drinks on the table. <laughs> yeah, you know, anyway, how Goodfellas works, for those you don't know, um, if you go out, you get drunk, you feel too drunk to drive home, they send a driver to drive your car and, and you home, right? So I thought, wow, that's tight, you get paid for driving different cars every night? So I thought, I should get that job, that's perfect for me. I'd get in the client's car with a camera and mount it on the dashboard and act like I'm Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, the Toyota Corolla. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I also, also like um, learning stuff, you know. Um, I like to watch shows, shows that are educational on TV, you know. Things like National Geographic, you know, The Nature Planet. You know, I learned some interesting stuff the other day watching National Geographic. Um, apparently ants can lift up to five times their own body weight. Did you guys know that? You know, I got curious. I was thinking, hmm, what if humans could do that? Can you imagine how strong fat people would be? <laughs> I mean, fat people would be like superheroes, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like fat people across the world would be wiping their ass with men's health magazines, right? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, like fat people would walk around, like, you know, they, they wouldn't even buy jacks for their cars anymore. They'd be just changing their wheels, like... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, like, McDonald's would be like an illegal steroid, right? <laughs> like, you can't buy McDonald's legally. People be selling Happy Meals out of trench coats and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? People be rolling chicken foldovers at home like it's a blood, you know? <laughs> Crushing vegetables and, and chicken, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's great to be a comic in this, in this country these days. I, I, there's a lot of comics that came before us that are leading the way, you know. I'm, I feel very proud, you know. People like David Gao, you know, our very own Joe Parker over here, you know. Julius Malema, you know, people like that. <laughs> you know, people that inspire you to be funny, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It's just, it's just great. It's great. Yeah, but um, but it, but, but you gotta admit though, Julius Malema has to be a stand-up comic. Yeah, I mean, this guy called Evan Zeta a cockroach. I mean, that's not political, you know. I mean, you know, where, which part in political science did you learn about cockroaches? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the only reason why he's not on stage is that it'll be a conflict of interest. He's already been paid to be a politician. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, like, ANC Youth League meetings would be like, um, and the next agenda for tonight's meeting, and uh, those who would like to purchase tickets for the next only comedy event, 
featuring Comrade Julius uh, can do so after the after the meeting has adjourned. <laughs> no, you guys have been great. You guys have been great. Um, it's not like I'm not done yet, motherfuckers. Come on, man. I'm just saying you all been great. You know, they didn't like other shows. Like I got so desperate for laughs. I was like, you know those trucks that carry petrol. What happens when they run out of petrol? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zidi and Etienne, you've been fabulous, thank you very much. Next we're going to have up there something which is rather unusual in comedy. That's a female doing stand-up comedy. See, you already found out the lady in the front doesn't swear.